Hi, this is John and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about some of the most overworked muscles on your body. I know you all have been splitting up your workouts, okay? The majority of you guys have been. And girls. And in doing this, you may be having a lot of crossover effect onto body parts that you're not even aware of. I'll give you a great example. Delts, your shoulders. When it comes to training your shoulders, you use your shoulders not only when you do lateral raises, overhead presses, rear delt laterals. All of those are direct shoulder exercises that commonly are used in a shoulder routine. However, if you're training your chest or your back on any of the other workout days, or even your triceps on any of the other workout days from separate from your shoulders, you may be indirectly smashing your shoulders all over again. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you go to do your chest work, it's obvious. You can't isolate your pec from your delt. So if you've already trained your shoulders that week or you're about to a few days later, when you do your chest work, you're going to stress your chest very hard, but also at least the anterior or the front part of your delt is going to get hit very, very hard. I know a lot of you have felt sore in both your chest and your shoulders after doing some heavy chest work. It's because it uses a lot of shoulders. And if you're training to failure, you just trained your shoulders to failure. So now going and hitting them again a couple of days later on a shoulder workout, effectively just trained your shoulders yet again. So multiple times per week just from chest work and shoulder work. That's not counting when you go to train your back. You go to train your back. All of those rows, all of those pull downs, all of them, they all use your rear delt, your posterior deltoid, the back of your shoulders, along with your lats, your rhomboids, your traps, and your lumbars in some of the exercises. So what I'm getting at is even on a back workout, you're using delts, a lot of posterior and side delt as well. So there's another workout day for your shoulders involved in your back workout. You see what I mean? So if you're training your chest on one day, your shoulders on another day, and your back on another day, you've just effectively trained parts of your deltoids, your shoulders, on the chest workout on the shoulder workout and on the back workout repeatedly. So there's three direct or indirect shoulder workouts and I'll hit you with a fourth one. When you do your triceps, whoa, you train your arms on a separate day. There's four upper body workouts. Let's say you train six, five, six days a week and four of those workouts at least are dedicated towards upper body work. And you do your arms on a fourth day. I've already mentioned what happens on the first three. Now you're on your fourth which is just a dedicated arm workout. During that workout, are you gonna do any compound tricep movements, close grip benches, dips of any kind? Anything that involves, that's not pure isolation tricep work. Any compound chest movement. Bench dips where you have your arms behind you on a bench with your legs spread out in front of you. Those are compound tricep movements that are going to use, yes, your anterior or the front part of your deltoid at least, and parts of the medial head as well. It's going to use those parts of your shoulder yet again. So now we're at one, two, three, and a fourth workout upper body that involves your shoulders. Now, what am I saying here? Should you avoid using your shoulders and doing a direct shoulder workout? I don't think so, uh, but I do believe you don't need to train them quite as often. So if you were to skip your shoulders every other week, skip a shoulder workout. You get enough work, enough direct work in your chest, your back, your tricep work. All of those involve your shoulders. So this is the tip for today. Maybe. Take a try at skipping every other week your delt, your direct delt shoulder work. 
that will, in effect, allow your shoulders more recovery. So once you dig that hole of energy, your body has to recover and then grow. So if you allow it to, if you don't allow it to, it won't ever grow. So if you're training your chest and your shoulders get hit that day and they start to recover and then up, you train your shoulders again and then they start to recover and then up, you train your back and they start to recover and then up, you train your triceps and you do compound work that day and your delts get hit hard and you're starting to recover. You've never overcompensated. You've never allowed those delts to grow. So allow them to grow. Now, secondarily, another body part, which may be getting overworked, your biceps. Out of all of your upper body muscles, your shoulders and your biceps are used more than anything else in almost all upper body work. What do I mean by that? Well, when you go, the obvious, right? When you go do curls of any kind, you're gonna use your biceps very hard, very directly, right? Secondarily, any back workout that you do, rowing, pull downs of any nature, any one of those, you're going to be stressing your biceps very hard. So let's go back to our original model. You did a chest workout, shoulder workout, back workout, and then an arm workout before you even got around to legs that week. Well, chest, you did use your biceps. How so? Well, whenever you did flies, any chest motion that involved a flying action, flat dumbbell flies, cable crossovers, any one of those, incline dumbbell flies, your biceps are not just a stabilizer. Your biceps attach in your forearm, but they run up across your shoulder joint and they help to close the gap when you do a fly motion and pull that elbow in towards the center of your body. So the upper part of your bicep is activated heavily. I know you have felt your biceps when you use a pec deck or a fly machine. I know you feel a lot of biceps or cable crossovers dumbbell flies. It's because you're using your biceps. So chest, you're going to use your biceps when you do any flying motion. Okay. Shoulder workout. Mm, very little bicep movement. Let's not even worry about that one. So let's go. Chest, forget about the shoulders. Back workout. All biceps. Every single exercise that you do for your back is going to involve your biceps. So on your chest workout and on your back workout, You've just hit your biceps indirectly pretty hard. Every one of them, every exercise that you could use. And then you come in for an arm workout, a dedicated arm workout, where you're going to do isolation bicep work and forearm work or brachialis work, hammer curls, reverse curls, things like that, which are all heavily used, again, in the back workout. So that leaves you with at least three direct and indirect bicep workouts that you're subjecting yourself to during the week, and especially if you train to failure on the chest work, on the back work, those biceps are also going to failure during those workouts. So multiple hits per week. If you're not satisfied with how your biceps are progressing, maybe the answer is don't train them as often, just like I said about the shoulders. Maybe skip every other week of your bicep work and see if in fact it doesn't help your biceps to grow a little bit better, to recover and then grow better. For me, this has worked wonders. I have found it to be very, very true. Unless you're genetically gifted in those areas, in those shoulders, in those biceps, and they can take that kind of work, I personally was not that guy. So I had to find every little way that I could to help to improve my training of my biceps and my shoulders. And the only, well, one of the major ways that I found was very helpful was to cut back on the training, still train very intensely on them, but not train them on a weekly must-do type routine. I would just change that up and switch to every other week, or maybe even less often in my case, and I found that worked wonders as well. So that's it for today. Two of the most overworked muscles on your body, your biceps and your shoulders. Don't train them too often, still train them very hard, and just be aware of how much indirect work you're getting on those muscles to help you to des design your own personal routine 
and I'm sure you'll be on your way to making great progress. From my heart to you, John Hart, thanks for stopping by. Hey, before you leave, please hit that red subscribe button down there on your bottom right, as well as a thumbs up on your bottom left before you go. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.